All right, I gotta do a quick intro to this video. So I was in Colorado with Stephanie. We were filming with Kyle Connor from Out of Spec. Definitely check out his channel. I will link that down below. And while we were there, Kyle offered for us to use his Rivian R1T to get around. And we were both pretty excited about it. I wanted to film like an ownership experience video because we were gonna have the car for several days and have to actually use it like it's our vehicle. And I thought that would be really cool. But as you'll see, the whole charging experience like really ruined everything. So. That was awful. And after the end of this video that you're watching, I talked to Kyle and I was like, is there any way like we could trade, you know, for something else? Because we can't even get anywhere. Like we, there's no chargers around that are working, that are reliable. And he kind of chuckled and he was like, yeah, I figured you were going to ask. I wanted you to experience the Electrify America Network. He was like, it's good content. Um, and it's something that a lot of other EV owners that don't own Teslas have to deal with. So just kind of prefacing with that. Uh, it, it, I wanted this to be like, hey, check out the Rivian. Here it is driving around with it. And it kind of devolved into this like, wow, this is awful because we can't even use the vehicle. I mean, the most basic part of owning a vehicle is fueling it. And in our situation, we couldn't charge at the house we were at. We had to rely on public infrastructure and charging was really well, pretty much not a possibility unless you had hours and hours to spend sitting there uh, waiting to charge it up. So with all that in mind, one other thing, uh, the sounds kind of weird for some of the driving portion. So sorry, but I, I did the best I could with like some post uh, editing to make it sound better. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoy the video and I will talk to you down in the comments. What's going on everybody? Chris and Stephanie here and we are in a Rivian R1T. So we're in Colorado. We're going to do some ADAS, some driver assistance and uh, well, me mostly <laughs> full self driving bit. Yeah, uh, full self-driving beta testing with uh, Kyle from Out of Spec. So I'll link his channels down below. Make sure you check that out. But he is like the nicest guy you will ever meet in the world. And he let us borrow his Rivian while we're here. So we have transportation. So I figured we could make a video about this because we're going to have to charge it and, and kind of do everything uh, and let you know our, you know, what we think of the car, of the truck. Uh, it's a pickup and all of that. So uh, somebody wants our parking spot. So we're going to go. All right, we're here in the Rivian. I hope it sounds okay. And I'm using Rivian's Highway Assist, I think is what they call it. Uh, for a long time, I could not get it to activate because it, it was a construction zone and the car was just not about it. It had a message, uh, something to the effect of, it doesn't know what this road is. So it doesn't seem that the Rivian has uh, auto lane change. I don't know. I'm not going to say it does or doesn't. But when I turn the turn signal on, it doesn't seem to do anything. It just kind of sits here. And then I make the lane change myself, which disengages the whole driver assistance system. And then I turn it back on just the same as basic autopilot. So far using it, I've used it once before in Sandy's uh, Rivian R1T, just for a, a little bit of time. And the time I used it there was absolutely perfect. Uh, so far here, when it's been engaged, it's also been working perfectly. So real quick, I got to interject and say, if you're thinking about getting a Rivian or any other EV, you need to check out the totally free tools from DroneQuote that can help you make the best decision. Not only can DroneQuote show you how much you'll save on fuel by switching to an EV, they can also help you decide if a solar system is the right purchase for you and your home. One of my favorite parts about DroneQuote is how much they care about the customer. Now, solar has been an amazing purchase for us, and for most people, it's a really good decision, but it isn't for everybody, and if that happens to be you, DroneQuote is not afraid to tell you, you know what, solar is not the best purchase right now. And not only do they send out a licensed drone pilot to get all the data they need totally for free to help you find the best quote from local contractors, they come out after the job is done to make sure everything was done right, and they have your back in case something goes wrong. Don't just take my word for it, DroneQuote has some amazing reviews on their website from people that were very happy that they used the services from DroneQuote. So huge thank you to DroneQuote for sponsoring today's video. Definitely check out the link below for the free tools you can use from them to get more knowledgeable about EVs and solar. It doesn't seem that it really has any driver monitoring in terms of like what you're doing with your phone and stuff. So I picked up my phone and kind of tried to look at it for a bit like this and the car does not seem to care at all. So I find that very interesting. Uh, there is some camera situation, something up here. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it doesn't seem to be active. Maybe it will be in the future or maybe, a, I don't know, I'm like tricking the system. Uh, maybe I should take my sunglasses off and see if it'll yell at me then because I have sunglasses on. But so far I've been very, I've been able to very easily hold my phone here for long periods of time, not touch the steering wheel. And the car does not care at all. The Rivian doesn't really mind, uh, which, you know, make your own conclusions about that, but that's uh, where it is now. So sunglasses are off. Let me look down. I've been looking at the road this whole time. So I've been holding my phone, just pretending. Right now I'm looking at my phone. So keep your hands on the wheel. I'll just give that. I'm not looking at the road though. Yeah, so it does not seem to care if I'm, you know, texting or whatever I want to be doing on here. So uh, I don't know, pretty interesting point when you see so much in the news about Tesla and 
their driver monitor, blah, 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 blah. And then in the Rivian, you can do whatever you want. So I'm not complaining. Rivian, you got a great setup here. <laughs> this is very nice. But uh, yeah, just something I thought I would point out. But yeah, overall, so far, lots of miles on here. Um, and it's been, it's been awesome so far. I we exit ahead, take control of the vehicle. So we'll see what it does. I'll keep my hand on it so it doesn't get mad at that. Highway exit ahead, take control. It's warning me. This is great. This is really good. So I'm taking exit. Is that what I'm doing? I don't even know where I'm supposed to go. I think I'm supposed to stay on the highway. Oh, okay. So I, I don't know. It seemed to get confused there because we're not supposed to take an exit. We're supposed to continue here, but it still wanted me to take over there. So I'm going to move over for these people. And it should be good to turn back on. Or maybe this part of the road is not mapped or something but yeah it's not uh not ready to go right here all right so now the part of the rivian i'm the most kind of nervous about we have to go charge it so <laughs> i've never charged a non-tesla and and we're using public infrastructure so i've used some of the other chargers that are not fast charging but i've never used like the dc fast chargers that are not superchargers so we're looking at the map here let's check it out so if i hit start and batteries it says we'll get there with 16 miles so it doesn't care Okay. <laughs> so we got to zoom out and it does show you. So there's one right here, but this one's kind of slow. Yeah, that's only 50 kilowatts. So we should be able to do better than that. Um, if we zoom out. So there's some over here. Is there anything on the way? So there's this one. Is it still slow? Yeah, that's only 63. And what's 63? That's a weird number. So I'm guessing we're going to have to go here. This is an Electrify America, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Four chargers, 150 max. What about this? 125 max. So... <laughs> If this doesn't work, we're like stranded. All right, so we're heading over there, preparing battery for fast charging. So that's good. The battery will be ready. Now that's really bad if we can't actually fast charge because it's going to use the battery to do that. And you can probably hear there's like a buzzing, vibrating that started when it started doing that. And the whole pedal, like my foot is on the, the accelerator, is like vibrating with that noise. It's kind of crazy. Uh, so... I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but it's just weird. Like in, in a Tesla, you definitely don't feel your pedal vibrating when it's um, getting ready to charge. Although you do hear it. You can hear everything whir up and, and um, it, that it's using more energy. So we really got to hope that this is going to work because if it doesn't, we're like definitely stranded. <laughs> All right, so here we are at Electrify America. We actually got lucky. The nav said it was 150 kilowatts. It's actually 350. Well, let's see if it works. That's always the thing with these stations. People say they're not working. We check the app. It says... Okay, it says plug in first. Ready. Okay, so I'll just follow the directions. I've literally never used this. So excuse me if I screwed up. This is really heavy. I don't have to make deal. I'm going to come show the Rivian charge port. So you just touch right there. So you get a flap here that, you know, Tesla people don't have. You got to pull that down. And then... All right, that went in okay. Now it says connecting to vehicle. I'm happy so far. This is actually working great. 48 cents per kilowatt hour. Gosh, it's expensive. So that's for guests. If you're a member, you get whatever, less. I'm not a member. So pay by credit card or whatever. So let's see if I can tap. Processing. It may take a minute. Hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. So far this is actually working really well. But I guess we're not charging yet, so I shouldn't be too happy. Now this is where, like, come on. <laughs> and a supercharger, you plug in, and it's charging. I know Tesla's all integrated and everything, but that's part of the advantage. Payment declined. Uh-oh. This, this is my card. I just used it. Your payment has been declined. Press retry to submit an alternate payment method. Okay, so we're going to just do it this way. Maybe that'll work. Okay, authorized. authorized. So you, you can't tap to pay for some reason. Got it. Initiating charge. Can I take this out? Please remove. Okay, maybe this is gonna work great. I mean, not quite as smooth as a supercharger, but overall not that big of a deal. And we're charging. You have to hit, you don't have to hit continue. I don't know. Oh, okay, so I can basically put in my phone number so it'll text me for updates. We're not gonna go far, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, do you want a receipt? No receipt. Okay. Okay, now it says 34 minutes left until 100%, so that's cool. We're at 113 kilowatts right away. That's a good speed. Let's see how high this gets, 125, 135. 
And I can hear the Rivian whirring behind me. Isn't this supposed to turn green? They had uh, their charge status here. I don't know, it's not there now. So the vehicle is at 9%. Okay, so we're at 205. I would guess that's probably where the Rivian's happy. This goes up to 350 and the Rivian is 205, 206. Probably where it's gonna sit. So we'll check in with you in a bit, but so far this experience has been super easy and no problem at all. This one right next to it is only 150. And the app told us that. So we, purpose, pur we purposely did not pick number one. And the two other ones are in use. So we're lucky that they weren't all in use. Now you signed up for the app on the way here because I didn't know if you had to be a member and do all this stuff. So Stephanie like did everything for the app and then it said 350 on the app even though the Rivian only said 150. Well, I guess I was happy a little too soon. Now we're down to just a few minutes later, 41 kilowatts and the Rivian is saying limited by charging station. So I'm going to go check it out, see if I can make that not happen that way. Um, but that's really dumb. All right, so while we are waiting to charge, this thing is like exploding back here. I don't know if you heard that. Did not plan to get that on video. <laughs> but um, we, uh, I'll give you a little overview of this station. So there's three of what they call the hyper fast chargers. Those one, two, three do 350 kilowatts. And then this first station here does up to 150, of course, on uh, the fast charger, the CCS. Chetimo is only up to 50 kilowatts on that. Um, but of course, nobody's gonna use that. And the other two stalls are taken up. Doesn't seem to matter, except now I'm limited to 40 kilowatts. I don't know if there's anything I can do about that, but as of now, it doesn't seem like I can. All right, so I went out and stopped the charge and restarted it, and now we're up to 213 kilowatts. So we'll see how long that lasts. That's like kind of embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> 350 kilowatts, but then you only do 200, and at the same time, you put me down to 40 for no reason, and there's no reason on the screen. I went and looked at the screen out there. It said nothing. It just said that was the charging speed. So here's our settings for the Rivian. If you click here, you can see they recommend for daily 70%. I mean, depending on the driving you're doing, that's probably still plenty, but that's a low recommendation. Extended is 85% and then max is 100%. Of course, you can customize it however you like. Whoops, I clicked the wrong thing. And if you kind of do that, you can put it wherever you want, down to 50 or up to 100. Um, I put it up to 90 for now. I don't know how long we're gonna sit here and wait for this to charge, but um, lots of noises as well. You can hear, hear everything going and we're up to 214 now. So let's hope it holds that. And right as I stopped recording, look at this. It's just dropping and dropping. Why? Oh my gosh. Limited by charging station again. This is crazy. This is so crazy. What an embarrassment. <laughs> I like want to ask, there's people charging next to us. I want to ask them if they're having the same issue. Like, why is it making me restart it? Could it be because it's overheating? Does that have anything to do well, with it? Well, maybe the charging station is, but the Rivian is telling us charging limited by charging station. Look at the time going on. Yeah. Oh, my god. I know. And when I, again, when I went out there, yes, you could be right. It could be overheating. But I looked at the screen. It said nothing on the screen. It just... Why does the amount of money keep changing? Is it? Yeah, it keeps going down and then up. Well, it is... Luckily, they charge based on kilowatt hours, which is like the amount of energy you take. It's not a function of time. Oh. So, like, even if you sit here longer, it's not going to charge you more. It's based on the amount of energy you take, which is a good thing. All right, we're going to call Kyle and see if there's some secret that I don't know here. Hello there. Kyle. What's up? I'm, I'm charging at this beautiful Electrify America. And it, it got up to 215-ish kilowatts and yeah. then went down to 40. Yeah. So I stopped it and restarted it, and then the same thing happened. So we're at 42 kilowatts. Is there some kind of secret handshake I got to do here? Oh, so that just means that uh, likely the cable cooling is failing and it limits you to 100 amps. So Great. 100 amps times roughly 400 volt system architecture is roughly 40 kilowatts. So you're going to want to switch to a different one that doesn't derate. It probably happens after 10 minutes or 5 minutes or some preset number. Yeah. It'll give you a boost. Yeah, so that's pretty common uh, with EA. So, uh, yep, just got to switch to a different one. Great. Well, the other two um, hyper chargers are taken, but I guess 150 kilowatts is better than 40. So I guess I'll switch to that. Yeah, that'll be your best bet. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and the other one, because you're in Loveland? Y yeah. Yeah, the other one's an ABB, which is much better than the BTC hardware that we have with the new ones. So that should work pretty well. I'm glad this is user friendly. Um, yeah, it really just sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. All right, thank you. Yeah. All right, see ya. Bye. <laughs> All right, so we've moved over to 
the slower charger, which will actually be faster after you heard my conversation with Kyle. Although right now, it's at 80 kilowatts, and I'm like not happy with this experience. The other two cars are still here. I would expect them to be done by now. I'm surprised it's taking this long. But there's maybe, I think that maybe the far one did switch, but this close one's been here the whole time. And they told me, I talked to them just really briefly, that they had to try two different stalls before they could even get one working. <laughs> so this is like the experience here with Electrify America. It's not like people making it up. Like I'm living it right now. And I had to call like an expert on charging and ask him what was going on because there's no message on the screen. He said the cooling in the cable is failing. Why wouldn't the screen say, I don't know, cable overheated or something? Just tell me like charging not optimal, anything. But there was nothing on the screen to indicate to me there was a problem. So yeah, we're getting 81 kilowatts. It's better than 40, but it's not 150. Up to 150 kilowatts is what it says on it. Up to 150. Yeah. Like, good luck if you get it. This is terrible. So they're, we're getting 82. They're not lying is what you're saying. They're not lying, but it's just very misleading. Yep. Because it's like Tesla, you said, gets up to 250. It's like, oh, the Electrify America has 350. BS. <laughs> Censor myself. All right. So we're using the Rivian autopilot. We left. We gave up on charging. I mean... It, we moved over to the other stall, you know, like I talked about, and it just was taking road information. Okay, and now that's failing. Um, <laughs> um, we we just gave up. We got 100 whatever miles, 105, 106 miles, and just left because it was too slow. <laughs> I don't know. We'll try again later. I mean, that's really disappointing. I can't imagine that. Like, you buy an EV, and that's your first experience. I mean, I would probably never want one again. I'd probably sell it. And, I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, we got places to be. Like, <laughs> I don't have time for that. Okay, so here's the wife's opinion of the Rivian. It's a nice truck. It's pretty. It's clean. It's, I mean, it's, it's a nice truck. There's nothing, like, bad about it, but there's also nothing special or spectacular about it, especially when you take the charging network into consideration, which is not the Rivian's fault, but... I mean, compared to a Tesla, I'm like, why would anyone ever buy anything other than a Tesla? Because the supercharging alone. But the other thing is, like, my dad has owned GM trucks his entire, like, since I've been alive. And this is just not that much different to me than driving in his truck. Like, it's, the screens are probably the biggest difference. But that's really it. Um, so, like... Compared to Tesla, like everything about Tesla is a little bit different, a little bit unique, a little bit like futuristic, and I, I like that. It just makes it feel like a little extra special when you get in the car. I mean, like the way you open and close the doors is cool. The way that the ventilation system works is cool. I just, they, some of their cars have yokes in them and are stockless, and the autopilot, like, the beta, like every, like there's just so much more with a Tesla. It's like, why would you, why would you pick this over a Tesla? I just, that's just where I'm at. Show them this road. So I can't use the highway, highway assist unavailable on this road. What? But it's a highway. It's like, this is when, like even a gas car that has like the cruise control setting stuff would work better. So I can use adaptive, but I can't use the lane key. Yeah, but you could use lane keep in a gas car probably on this. Yeah, like yeah, the newer gas cars right, have yeah. all of that technology. Probably, so, yes. and our gas tank would be full by now, and <laughs> we would be all set. Like we wouldn't be stuck. Like, I, I'm just I'm not impressed. That's just my personal opinion. Sorry. When you lock the Rivian, you get a nice little chirp. You like that? No. All right. So while I'm waiting 20 friggin' minutes for this thing to communicate there we go <laughs> I, we came to this evgo which you know what it seems to be working so i shouldn't i should just shut up uh but we plugged in with the you know what we're supposed to here the ccs and the price is i think 54 or 52 cents per kilowatt hour on top of a 2.99 plug-in fee so you plug your car in you pay three bucks for nothing <laughs> and then you pay 52 cents per it is crazy this is seriously just like embarrassing for EVs outside of Tesla. I mean, it's to the point where, I don't wanna like do the wrap up of the video quite yet, but like if you're wanting a car and if you have to charge it outside of your house, if you wanna stay home and charge at your house, fine, get whatever you want, I don't care. 
But if you have to charge anywhere outside of home, if you wanna go on road trips or just in an emergency, be able to plug in somewhere to get some power to make it home, you know, maybe you didn't charge enough that morning or something, either buy a Tesla or buy a gas car. It's not worth it to buy any of these other EVs because of this. It's crazy. I mean, there's news stories about how like, oh, EVs are more expensive than gas cars. Yeah, I see why. <laughs> I always see those news stories. I'm like, what the, what are these people talking about? Yeah, this is why, because of this stuff. All right, so we went and got ice cream. We were like, you know what, let this thing charge. We've already paid the friggin' $2.99 plug-in fee, whatever. And we get back and it's not even charging. <laughs> so it got us up to 66%. We had the limit in the Rivian set to 90%. And it just stopped. I didn't want this video to turn into like a whole charging video, but I guess what do you expect when you don't have a supercharger network, this is what you're dealing with. So there's no message on the screen. The thing I do like though, is that it looks like it just stopped. Who knows why? And it says to get started, plug in. So it seems if I was a jerk and parked here and was never gonna come back, anyone could just walk up and take this and plug it into their own car and then get charging and, and that part is good. But why did it stop? Why? How annoying. I thought we were gonna be like full by now. Also, what is this situation? Like, is this just what it's supposed to be like? Just like cables everywhere? Yeah, I don't know. That's, uh, that's great. I'm, this is filmed later, but I'm putting this before the whole ending rant thing. I am extremely grateful to be able to drive a car like this. We both are. And if Kyle would have given me a 2001, like, Honda Civic, I would have been extremely grateful. Oh, yeah. Any, so don't think, from, yeah, so don't think from that point of view, we're just being like, Complaining we're just and petty. critiquing it like as if we were to buy it. Exactly, yeah. So but, just putting that as a disclaimer. Yeah, because, yeah, just the fact that he loaned us this really nice truck. Right. Like, that's amazing. Yeah, very grateful yeah. to not have to take Ubers everywhere. And Yes. Yes. All right, so I guess we're going to wrap up the Rivian video here. We still have it for a little bit of time. Maybe there will be more. But overall, uh, I'll go first. I, I like the vehicle overall. There's some features I like, especially in the driving that I talked about during the, you know, autopilot, whatever they call it, driver assist uh, portion. I really like uh, the rear uh, cross traffic alert, which most cars outside of Tesla's have saved us once already. I mean, we weren't going to hit somebody, but we were backing up and someone was coming and it alarmed like immediately. So I knew to stop and then kind of get out of their way. So that stuff I really like. The vehicle itself, I appreciate. It's a nice vehicle, but using it just makes me appreciate my Tesla more. And I'm always, again, like I'm a huge Tesla fan, obviously I love my vehicles, but I'm always open to like something better. Like if there's something better, why wouldn't I want that? It's not like I work at Tesla or they pay me or something. It's just, that's the best thing I've had an experience with and it's awesome. So I like to use it. So if this was that much better, I'd be like, man, maybe I need to get a Rivian or whatever. But just that charging experience. I mean, we gave up. This is, we're still like the last charging thing you saw. That's it. We haven't charged it anymore. We're at 66%. I don't even know what we're going to do for tomorrow. Um, we'll figure it out. But we have like some driving we want to do tomorrow. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, the features of the car, I, I enjoy. It's comfortable. The suspension and all that is fine. I, I wouldn't say it's spectacular compared to like the Model X um, or the the Model Y even. It's better than that, but I don't know. Not like that much better. So overall, I like the vehicle, but the overall experience is awful. And as I said earlier, if you want to do anything that involves you charging outside of your house, you either get a Tesla or you get a gas car. It's not worth getting any other EV at this point right now because you don't have reliable infrastructure to fuel it. I mean, that's the most basic part of owning a car is fueling it. And you can't, like, it doesn't matter how awesome the car is. If you can't reliably fuel it, it's useless hunk of junk. <laughs> so it's just ruined the whole thing. Like, we were both very excited. I'll let you do yours. But we were both very excited. Like, oh, Rivian, this will be fun. This will be cool. And then now it's like, I don't care. So. Yeah. Uh, like Chris said. You're I'm, a lot more critical than me right now. So. Well, <laughs> and I haven't even driven it. I've just been a passenger. Um, but I was excited to check it out because I've never been in one before. I was like, this is going to be awesome. Honestly, I don't see any difference really from like as a passenger from just like being in like my dad's uh sierra gmc sierra like i just the charging like i would never pay the money for this car the charging has been scary like imagine being on a road trip somewhere like yeah. that, would, that would be terrible yeah, you'd be stuck and like no. that yeah talk about range anxiety <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um this is, like, to me, this experience, like, I feel like this is why there are so many people who are, like, against EVs and think that they're the worst thing in the world. Like, if this was their experience, I would totally agree with them. So, 
Um, same as what Chris said, I'm always open to better things. Was really excited to try out something new, but it's Tesla for me. Like I, there's no way I would not buy a Tesla. Like over the, I mean, like yeah, this at and this point. Yeah, at this point with the way things are set up, it's like to spend that much money on a car that you can't even charge when you're not at home. Like that's a deal breaker for me. Yeah. So we should acknowledge in a couple of years. Tesla's opening the supercharger network exactly to what degree that's going to all happen and work is, you know, still kind of up in the air, but future Rivians will come with the Tesla connector. You'll get to just go to a supercharger. I mean, ideally this is how it'll work and plug in and supercharge there. So, you know, in say two or three years, the infrastructure may be to the same level as Tesla's or it could be even better, you know, whatever. I'm open to any of that actually happening. I don't think that's going to be the case, but that's potentially going to happen. So I just should mention that. As of today, this is the experience. In three years, of course, that's a long time. Maybe it'll be totally different. But then I feel like Tesla's experience is going to be even better because their superchargers will be even faster and there will be so many more of them. I mean, they build so many a day. So many a day. You go to an electrifying maker, there's four stalls. Like, <laughs> it, it, just, it, work. it just makes me respect Tesla more mm -hmm. because they actually, like, planned it out. Like, they were smart about it. Like, now you've got all these other companies coming out with EVs and they have no plan for, I mean... They do in the future because Tesla jumped in and was like, hey, like, um, it still is a nice car overall. I mean, and I'm still, like, really thankful that Kyle let us borrow it. Oh, of course. I mean, like, that's amazing. Like, super generous. Um, But, like, if, if I was going to buy this car. All right. So that's it. That's our Rivian experience. I'm I'm a little sad because I was excited and the whole charging thing just ruined it for me. So um, if you were getting a Rivian and only charging it at home then I, I think you'd love it. I mean, I think it'd be, any EV I think would be nice. But then as soon as you get out of that, if you get to one of these chargers, and you know, Kyle said that charger has been like that for weeks. It's not like we had a fluke. He said that issue has been at that charger for weeks. Okay, we're going to be late now. Not F-O-U-R, but multiple weeks. All right, we're going to dinner. All right. Hope you enjoyed. Ask questions down below. You'll see us in the next video.